previously on the World Enduro Super Series. The Iron Giant didn't disappoint. The silent assassin Graham Jarvis and Johnny Walker battled Manuel Lettenbichler and Billy Bolt for first and second place at the Erzberg Rodeo Red Bull Air Scramble. It was a nail-biting finish that saw veteran rider Jarvis coming in first, taking his fourth victory at Erzberg. After two rounds of West, it's British KTM rider Johnny Walker in the lead with Husqvarna's Billy Bolt and Erzberg champ Graham Jarvis tied for second. Only five days after round two, we head to France for more West action. Secluded in scenic solitude, the peaceful French mountain town of Mons is full of history and spectacular beauty. It's also the birthplace of one of the original enduro events, Le Trèfle Lozérien AMV. Now in its 32nd year, Le Trèfle is a classic enduro. This style of racing is over a hundred years old and lays the foundation for all other types of enduro. It's a three-day race that takes 600 pros and amateurs through breathtaking liaisons and high-intensity special stages. And the fastest overall time at the end of day three will take the Trefla title. So far, Wes has been all about hard enduro with riders like Johnny Walker, Billy Bolt and Graham Jarvis leading the pack and the overall West standings. But this race is about speed and time. Classic enduro pros like Joseph Garcia, Nathan Watson and French legend Antoine Mayo are fast and experts in this style of racing. It's sure to be an action-packed round three of the World Enduro Super Series. The sun is shining in Mons, setting a beautiful stage for day one at Trèfle Lozérien AMV 2018. Le Trèfle is considered one of the most important enduro events in the country. In its 32-year history, only French riders have won this event. Le Trèfle is a mental and physical test, a race against the clock. To compete, riders need speed, stamina, and focus. They launch into the 253-kilometer track. 600 pros and amateurs embark on their hour-long journey to the first special stage. Only 20 seconds after arriving, the pros dive in. French Yamaha rider Emmanuel Albapar takes off. Hitting the grass first is an advantage. The more riders that roll over it, the slicker it gets. Challenging even for six-time French enduro champ, Julien Gauthier. His fall will cost him crucial seconds. KTM rider Joseph Garcia pushes hard until he crashes and injures his foot. Speed was on Yamaha rider Marc Bourgeois' side. He was fastest in special stage one, finishing the course in just over four minutes. As riders move through the next liaison to special stage two, we take a break from the race to learn more about Le Trèfle Lozérien AMV. We are here in, uh, in Mount in for Le Trèfle Lozérien and uh, we are about to race one of the nicest races of the West. Donc, euh, c'est en 1986 qu'on a lancé le trèfle lorsque j'étais président. Il était très innovant, donc en 1986. Et là, on a créé un, un, un concept où les, les amateurs pouvaient côtoyer les professionnels dans une épreuve organisée à leur dimension. Alors pourquoi en Lozère Parce que c'est vrai, c'est un département qui a beaucoup de variété de paysages. C'est complètement différent maintenant, la deuxième race, parce que les premières deux ont été complètement extrêmes races avec Lord Gars et Erzberg, et maintenant nous allons complètement à la classique. 
A classic enduro is like a big lap. We are doing 200 Ks on the first day and we have five tests on it. Your times during the special tests are combined and the person with the shortest combined times is, uh, is the winner on the day. Because sometimes you have a two hour of liaison and you ride slowly and to switch the rhythm, to restart the stage aggressive, yeah, this is difficult. The most important thing is the special tests, that's it. Normally we have uh, special tests are one by one, and I think between each rider 30 seconds normally. All the race is on the grass track. This is really typical in France. Slippery grass, uh, everything wet, and it will be a tough weekend because uh, there is also good French riders, so it will be interesting. For sure, it's hard to, to stay in race mode. That's a bit also the, the thing in the traffic to don't get bored, you know, in the transport and be back in the race pretty quick when you have the test. Nothing is finished till the last test. I'm ready for some speed, you know, keeping my goggles on and uh, getting some air to my face, you know. <laughs> Back to the day one race. As riders move through majestic mountains and tiny French villages over centuries old bridges, the beauty of this backdrop is undeniable. Liaisons give competitors a chance to absorb the setting and regroup before once again having to push the envelope at the next time trial. Riders make a necessary pit stop at a mountain village checkpoint. Joseph Garcia's earlier foot injury is a painful one, but not enough to keep him out of the race. First test was, uh, was okay. I think I make uh, the third or four uh, positions. The second uh, test is on uh, asphalt, so this is new for me. It's really short, just in an uphill. It will be fun. Hard Enduro legend Teddy Blazusiak is the first to hit the next track. And cheer on the riders while they roll over the only asphalt of the day. Louis Glorieux comes rolling around a corner. Hot on his heels is Benoit Calen, who rockets his way across the finish line with the fastest time. We did uh, two special tests, on, uh, on the road and uh, another one on, uh, on the grass. Good feeling, a beautiful landscape. So I think uh, for everybody, uh, we will have a good feeling and a good ride. It's a freewheeling ride across more mountainous terrain to Special Stage 3. Marc Bourgeois riding more like a champ than a team manager, spraying dirt and hugging the turn gets his second top time of the day. Amazingly, KTM's Joseph Garcia bounced back from his injury, furiously pushing over the finish line less than a second behind Bourgeois. I crashed in the first test, so it was a difficult to start the race. But here uh, I push a lot, uh, try to come back in front, so I did a uh, good time. Going. Like a pack of wolves hunting their prey, riders carefully and cautiously move through a winding mountain liaison in search of the next race against the clock. And they find it. On a hill overlooking Mond, a crowd eagerly waits. This special stage is the fifth and final of the day and the only one riders race on all three days. Gunning it off the start, Yamaha's Louis Glorieux tears up the track, taking the fastest time. Julien Gauthier roars around the corner and speeds his way to the second best finish. And Joseph Garcia loses a bit of time taking part of the track with him as he flies through the finish line with the third best run. 
But the day belonged to Marc Bourgeois with the overall best time. It's an amazing uh, day for me, you know, and uh, for everybody. It's, uh, the Moto Club, uh, I think, did a very good job and really good special test. We a beautiful landscape. I'm very happy. After the first day of racing, it's the French riders with the fastest times on home turf, with Bourgeois in first, Loïc Laurieux in second, and Emmanuel Albapar in third. Enduro is really difficult to have the, the perfect bike because uh, you have a lot, lot of tests. Normally for this race, uh, it's better to don't have a hard bike like a motocross bike, and also for the engine. It's better to have a, a smooth power. The last two races I've been on a two-stroke, so it's a big change. Completely different bike. I'm running KDM 300 EXC TPI bike, same as at the hard indoors. You need traction uh, with a full stroke. Last year I did, I've been world champion, so I'm fast with this bike. You know, some guys are out there riding two strokes, some guys are out there riding four strokes. It's good also for the, the competition to have also two stroke, four stroke, uh, everything. You know, I feel like I can, I can be more under control on the slippery tests with the four stroke. Um, obviously, the speed's a lot higher here, so that's why you need a, a bit of a stiffer suspension. I made it completely stiffer, and a bit slower. For the special test, we have to stay like all day at the same tire, um, but we can change the moves before the test. The moves you need, need to be soft, but not like an extreme. You need to be like medium. So yeah, it's completely different from the extreme and you need to, to come back a little bit after many days on the extreme bike. My bike is sick. <laughs> the sun comes up on Monde for day two of Trefle Lozerien AMV. Riders are about to embark on a new 218 kilometer course. The first classic enduro of the West season has already proven challenging for amateurs and pros. Many hard enduro experts who ruled the first two rounds of the West are here for the first time and are having trouble finding their footing. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit difficult to go from just uh, the liaison sections to being ready to go. There's definitely a, a fine art to it. It's, the French guys are, are all uh, on top of it, um, just trying to learn as much as I can and keep a gas on. Difficulty aside, West leaders are still giving it all they've got and enjoying every minute of this unfamiliar territory. Yeah, the liaison is, is not too bad. You know, we've been on mountain tops around all the uh, little towns in the bottom and that, it's unbelievable. From the first liaison to special stage one, riders are ready to rock. Still fired up from his day one win, Yamaha's Marc Bourgeois blasts through the course. Sherko's Theo Espinas pushes hard through the trees, a second behind him. And Bourgeois repeats his day one performance with the fastest time in the first special test. Yeah, he's a little bit slippery. It was a short uh, special test, but uh, very nice. For wake up, is good. Once again, the leaderboard consists solely of French riders. During the second liaison, Bourgeois' luck ran out. He hit a rock and injured his knee. Now, he's out of the competition. Fast forward through the second stage, competitors approach special test three. The only group start of the series, a five lap moto where riders begin in packs of eight. Current West leader Johnny Walker is more familiar with a head-to-head -head battle like this, but is still struggling to keep up with the local guys. In the end, it's Yamaha rider Emmanuel Alvapar riding fastest. His continued strong performances now put him in the overall lead. The 
question is, can he hang on to it until the end of the day? Riders encounter familiar territory as they reach special stage five. Second fastest rider from day one, Loic Lorieux has a strong start on the track. Gas Gas rider Johnny Aubert and KTM's Joseph Garcia rocket from the starting line, hungry for the fastest time. At the finish line, it's 2016 Trefla winner Johnny Aubert taking the fastest time to win the last special test of the day. Ripping it and ripping it, KTM's Joseph Garcia tears his way across the finish line, nearly taking it with him for second. Close behind, Loic Laurieux skids across in third. This is uh, really cool, really cool. I fight uh, all uh, the first two days for win one one test, but uh, finally, uh, yeah, the last one was uh, like a perfect special test. So I'm really happy about this uh, this result. After two days of racing, it's Yamaha's Emmanuel Albapar in the lead, Theo Espinas in second, and Loic Laurieux in third. Based on the day's events, it's clear that fortunes can change in an instant, and anyone can still win Le Trefle Lozeria AMV. Sunlight glistens on the landscape the morning of day three, shining down on a 134 kilometer racetrack that will lead one West Rider to victory at Le Trefle. There's a calm before the storm as competitors roll to special stage one for the final day of racing. At the track, fans and riders get a lay of the land. Last day here in La Trefle, at first test. The plan for today is just uh, give all. Win is difficult, but why not? I push for win always, so we'll see. Today, the starting order is reversed. The amateurs will start. Getting tires on an unridden track first is advantageous as riders try to make up time. Day two champion, Emmanuel Albapar hits the track. The Trefla newcomer Joseph Garcia explodes off the starting line. Racing like a madman, he's looking to close the 31 second gap between him and Albapar. Louis Laurier, third overall on day two, is also putting up a good time. But it's Garcia taking the fastest time of the day. With Laurier in second and Gauthier in third, Le Trefla leader Emmanuel Albapar finishes 10th dropping him out of the first place overall. Riders move through the next liaison to the second special stage where Garcia also furiously rides into first, finishing a full four seconds ahead of KTM's Nathan Watson. Theo Espinas claims third. At special stage three, Garcia riding like a bat out of hell continues to build on his momentum. Overall, West leader Johnny Walker makes an appearance, pushing hard to receive at least some points to widen his top spot gap. And Loic Laurieux is doing everything he can to take the Trefla title, now that the day one and two winners are out of contention. But it's Garcia who claims yet another victory, again finishing four seconds ahead of the next best time. Laurieux gets second and Walker's third. Yeah, today all the riders have the same conditions, not like yesterday that first five riders have the grass perfect. First test I did first overall, second also and third also, so now we focus on the race and keep pushing for first place, of course. I try to push, but uh, I try also to don't make mistakes because uh, if I make a crash, it's not possible to win. I try to find the balance and uh, we will see at the end. Hey, Garcia va vraiment très vite devant. Ça, il, a, il a haussé le rythme et ça va être dur. Et la cinquième, ça va se jouer euh, pas de beaucoup. Overall, Loic Laurier is leading with Albapar in second, Espinas in third, Gauthier in fourth, and Garcia quickly climbing the ladder into fifth. 
Winning at Le Trèfle is huge, and it means everything to the French riders. For French guys, if you won this race, it's really famous and important. Like, uh, I think more than if you won the French championship. I ride like eight times, I think, and I win one times and three or four times on the podium. Maybe it's my last year I can ride with the top riders. So I'm really, really happy to be here. And uh, yeah, for my last time in the Tref, I want to win this race. Et après, ben moi, j'ai participé donc à, aux 32 éditions. J'ai gagné en 92 la seule année. Et par contre, j'ai fini toutes les, toutes les éditions. Et donc, comme vous pouvez le voir, j'ai gagné pas mal de trophées en, en 32 ans de carrière. Donc, j'ai tout stocké là parce que je ne suis pas du tout fan de, de coupe, tout ça. Et euh, voilà, j'ai tout mis, j'ai entassé et euh, j'ai fait un petit musée euh, à part de, de la maison. Voilà, le trèfle aux aériens que j'avais dû sûrement gagner euh, eh bien, en 1990. Du championnat du monde, euh... hop, c'est pas grave. <rire> C'était exceptionnel parce que j'avais fait une bonne saison sur le Paris Le Cap. J'avais gagné des spéciales. Et surtout, eh bien, je voulais gagner le trèfle absolument parce que euh, toujours je tournais. Les années précédentes, j'étais toujours 3, 2. Donc à 92, pour moi, c'était l'année phare. Il fallait que je gagne. Par contre, je vais rentrer dans les spéciales avec la, la hargne où on est en hommage par rapport à, à son père qui est décédé cette année, qui s'appelait Guy Paulin, qui était un ancien. La cellule, eh bien, on, on va tout lâcher, on va essayer de rouler. J'ai envie de rouler et je me dis, voilà, tant que le, le trèfle existe, j'existerai. Back to the race. Showing no signs of being affected by his day one injury, Garcia is dominating day three, winning the first four special stages. One test left, so need to give all, uh, like all in. This point is the most uh, nervous point. Tension is mounting as riders head into the last special test. Garcia takes off in his hunt for the fastest time. It all comes down to this. A quick, clean race means he will accomplish what only Jamie McKenney from the UK has ever done before, take a spot on the historically all-French podium. Lovieux attacks the track. He needs to beat Garcia's time with a clean run in order to guarantee a second-place podium position. Coming over the finish line, Lovieux gets his guarantee. Now it's a waiting game. Now fighting for the final podium position is 20-year-old Theo Espinas. With a sixth place finish, he still has a good enough ride to take number two overall by only seven tenths of a second. But neither he nor Garcia are fast enough to beat Lovieux, who takes the Trefle title. Yeah, the condition was really good on the last test, and uh, I, won, uh, I won it. Perfect. This format of race is difficult to switch. I'm happy to, to finally uh, make a win here in Le Trefle. Today was an uh, awesome day for me. First time here in La Trefle in the grass. Today I won just the podium, and I fight for a win all day, and I'm really happy for that. After three days of intense classic enduro, fans and riders celebrate together. With three riders standing atop the podium. Spain's Joseph Garcia in third, young gun Theo Esperas in second, and the French champion Loïc Lavieux. Here are the top 10 riders after round three of the World Enduro Super Series. KTM's Johnny Walker still in first, Manny Lettenbickler is in second, and Husqvarna's rising star Billy Bolt is in third. At round four of West, we head to the wilds of Romania, where 450 riders battle at the toughest hard enduro rally in the world, Red Bull Romaniacs. 
I'm Troy Mannering saying thanks for joining us. Until next time, stay safe and keep the rubber side down. Hey guys, Travis Pastrana here from Nitro Circus. If you liked what you just watched, be sure to subscribe to the Red Bull Motorsport YouTube channel and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out.